How do you um, navigate a world where the US, your home country, has policies in place that prevent you selling to China, your biggest potential market? Yeah, Ed, what I observe uh, going on is there were some technology lines that were drawn. Some of the most advanced uh, manufacturing process capability now requires a license to be able to ship to China, which presumptively is, uh, is going to be not granted. And so um, what that has done is, we, we, as we look into next year, it, it's impacted two to two and a half billion dollars of our revenue has, has gone away from the customers that were impacted by that. Um, you know, the regulations are what they are. You have to comply with them at the end of the day, and, and that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, you, you know, they, having said all that, uh, we, we, we just finished the best quarter financially in the history of our company, our 42-year-old company, uh, just north of $5 billion in revenue. And looking into the December quarter, seeing strength continuing there, in spite of the fact that we have to deal with these uh, restrictions in terms of certain customers and certain technologies in China. Doug, there is some evidence that, that some names have been able to be a bit nimble. Were the restrictions and the licenses actually as hard to come by as you feared? Um, you, you know, we, we had seen that we knew this was coming. Uh, I mean, we, we had been interacting with the Department of Commerce, the U.S. government, relative to kind of how the industry works, how we were positioned in the industry, how, how the equipment sector supports the customer base. And so it was an educated process, I guess, is what I would describe. And uh, we understood it was coming and, and we were prepared for it. Do you understand more could be coming? tougher rules coming from the United States, the tit for tat continuing? You know, as, I, as we sit here today, I don't see anything incremental to what has already um, been communicated and out there. So I, I kind of think we are where we are. Um, and it's, it's part of just doing business. Um, China is going to be a little bit different, but the, the broad business is still pretty strong. Um, and, you know, we're, we're doing our best to support our customers uh, no matter where they are geographically. So you remain committed to China? You remain as invested in that country going forward? Uh, yeah, we still have a, a lot of customers we're shipping to in China. Um, so, some we no longer can in, in, at certain process technology nodes. And some of those customers, they, they have process technology that doesn't need the license, so we still do business with them. And uh, yeah, we're, we're still absolutely committed to the, the China region. And everywhere our customers uh, are, are buying equipment and e equipping their fabs. Doug, if you saw this coming, is that two to 2.5 billion sales hit for China conservative? Could, could the picture actually be brighter than that? You know, it might be. I, I think things are going to evolve. What ended up happening is technology lines were dropped excuse me, we're drawn in the most advanced technology requires a license, which again, presumptively won't be granted. Um, it's possible that some of these customers would invest at uh, process technology nodes that don't require the license. I think those discussions and evaluations are underway. Uh, and if there's some level of success there, then it won't be a as big as the two to two and a half billion dollars that we described. But uh, right now, that's uh, the best I have for you is two to two and a half billion dollars of, of impact to us. Doug. You sound pretty buoyant around the rest of the business. And I'm interested about consumer demand right here, right now, particularly for consumer electronics. How is that ultimately affecting your business right now? What are the headwinds there? You know, Caroline, as, as we look into next year, I mean, the semiconductor industry I describe as a growth cyclical industry. Uh, we grow over time. In fact, I was, I was looking at some data the other day. Uh, between pre-COVID and, and kind of where we're at today, from 2019 to 2022, Semiconductor industry has grown by 50% from a revenue standpoint. And the, uh, the spending on wafer fab equipment, which is what we do, has grown by nearly 90%. Those are the trends I see continuing into the future. Mm. Um, but it's a growth cyclical industry. So, um, you know, as we evaluate what next year looks like, we do believe, and in fact, as we uh, talk to our customers and understand what their plans are for next year, that there will be a reduction in spending next year uh, up to uh, the tune of 20 plus percent is what we see in terms of investment in wafer fab equipment spending. It, it's a growth cyclical industry. We have to be able to manage the company when that happens. We've been doing it for a long time and, and we'll manage it accordingly going into next year. But, but that's not what gets me excited, right? Um, there, there was a study McKinsey published earlier this year that talked about a trillion dollar semiconductor industry by the end of the decade. That's exciting. That's what I see happening in, in, in this industry. The semiconductor industry is enabling all aspects of society. Data is exploding. Um, we are the plumbing underneath making that data useful. 
And when an industry grows to a trillion dollars, there's a lot more equipment that's going to need to be put in place to, to be able well, to support that level of business. Doug, Doug, Doug real quick, because we're going to run out of time in a second. R&D, you make the machines that make the chips in simple terms, but you seem yes. really bullish about investment. Talk to us very quickly about R&D. What is going to drive you forward technologically? You know, every year, every single year, we have to bring out new capability. What our customers want in the future is beyond what we're able to do today. And so you, you always have to be getting better in this business. And that's absolutely what we're doing. You know, one of the things when I, when I look at the product portfolio at Lamb Research, yeah. we're bringing out a brand new etch platform that we're extremely excited about. It's the first bottoms up redesign of our etch configuration in, in over 20 years. We're the leader in etch technology. Um, and we've got a brand new tool capability coming out mm. that the customers are excited about, as are we.